Hello my loves, welcome back to another video. I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be bringing you my October wrap up, if it exists. <laughs> I can guarantee that this will be a shorter video than usual because I have a whole three books to talk about. Three. Yep. Yep. And if you watch my weekly vlogs, I did talk about all of these books around the same time, so this could be an entirely redundant video. But for the sake of consistency and for the people who don't watch my weekly vlogs, we have a wrap up. So I'm actually going to start with the book that I rated the lowest because this book. So I read Zeus is a Dick by Susie Donkin, which was actually an arc which I received through NetGalley. Now this is one I went into really unsure because clearly it's about Greek mythology, which I love. This is a recounting of the Greek myths, I guess, but through a very particular lens because this tells you about the Greek myths, but in a very humorous way. Now, right from the offset, I had a problem with this book because in the introduction, I felt like it just made bold claims about what the intention behind Greek mythology was. And even though I have absolutely no doubt that there is proof that this claim is actually a valid claim, I don't think you can just put a generalized statement like that out there in the world without talking about it a little bit more and a little bit more in depth, especially when you're basing the intention behind an entire book behind that. <laughs> because it is generally a lot more complicated than that and I did talk to a few people about it who helped me kind of solidify my thoughts I guess because I definitely don't have the background knowledge needed to be able to confront this enough I guess but I did chat about it with some people and it kind of solidified my discomfort around this claim I guess. But actually one of the bigger problems I had with this book was just the sheer inconsistency of it because like I said this book recounts the Greek myths in a very humorous way so one it has a very conversational tone which I get and it does suit the intention behind the book but it did make everything just generally feel more light-hearted which is fair enough it's fine to approach it this way but as you can probably tell from what the title suggests just from Zeus being a dick it does approach serious topics such as sexual assault with this level of light-heartedness which just felt really uncomfortable to read because one you would think it was just completely confronting it based on what the title is saying but also when it did confront it, it would later on be completely contradicted by other instances of sexual coercion, for instance, or just other stories of the same kind of nature not being confronted. I feel like I'm explaining this in a very confusing way, but take, for instance, the story of Medusa. Now, quite a lot of people nowadays know that the way that she's represented and the way that she's made into this monster because of her sexual assault is generally talked about a lot more now and you know, approached in very different ways, but you do generally get this agreement now that Medusa was a victim. But then in the very same book, the Hades and Persephone story was told through its romanticised view and its glamorised view, I guess, and I just really didn't understand this book's take. I just really didn't get how it could keep switching back and forth, and like I said, because the overall thing had a light-hearted tone to it, it did feel like they were just like, oop, there it goes again, that's just Zeus for you, and I, I don't know, it was just... It felt like a bad taste almost, which I feel bad saying because there was some element of nostalgia in this because Susie Donkin is actually one of the writers behind Horrible Histories, which I absolutely loved as a child and that approaches history in a silly way. And elements of that writing style and that approach definitely felt nostalgic to me because of that, but just not with these topics. <laughs> It just, it didn't sit right with me and, and even just in general, I didn't get along with the writing because it felt very much like a soap opera, like I said, very conversational in turn. There were a lot of pop culture references, which I have said in so many videos that I hate them. I hate them so much. This book quite literally references Harry Styles when talking to me about Greek mythology and my brain is just like, nope. So yes, it's safe to say I didn't get along with this book, but I did rate it 2.5 stars because I do think that it did do what it intended to do. It did approach mythology in an accessible and humorous way and I do think a lot of people would enjoy it. It definitely felt like Stephen Fry's mythos, but more exaggerated. So maybe if you like that, then you'll like this, but not for me, I'm afraid. <laughs> Please don't be alarmed by this. I literally just touched my neck and uh, appear to have 
gone very red. <laughs> Next up we have These Violent Delights by Micah Nemereva which is a dark academia and it follows two guys who end up in this really obsessive relationship with each other and as with a lot of dark academia style books you start out this book with a crime scene of sorts but then you actually flash back and follow the events leading up to that so this is one of those books which you kind of can't help falling into. It does start off pretty slow although it does throw you in right in the middle of an ethics argument which is kind of daunting when you first start but it does definitely hit you with the dark academia feel straight from the offset and as I said you do start out the book with the knowledge that this is going to escalate dramatically somehow so it is very easy to fall into but especially because with this being a very obsessive relationship the mentality of these characters just spirals so quickly that you fall with them. <laughs> but the interesting thing is you know that they do not have a healthy mindset. You know that you can't necessarily rely on this character to give you a fair representation of what people's intentions are or what is actually going on in the story and it just makes it even more interesting to read because you're reading it and just thinking what is going on? Now I will say that there is actually an element of this which I think people would find annoying because the way that these characters flip and flop between believing what's true or accusing people of lying or just the amount of times that the story swaps between what's true and what's not is a lot. It does it a lot and it is quite excessive but that was one of those situations where by the time we got to that point I was already well caught in the story and can definitely see why it would be really hard to escape even if you had zero actual trust in this person how it would be so hard to break away from them. I will say that I wish we saw some of the more everyday moments between these characters I guess because while you know that this is a very toxic relationship and you can also understand how they got caught in it I think you only really see the more dramatic side of that or the more evident side of it I guess and it almost made me think why aren't all of these people around them pointing this out for what it is. I think there's only one character who says that this relationship is a little bit off but other than that nobody really questions it and I think it definitely would have helped to enhance the belief in that if we saw some of the more everyday moments rather than them both being quite <laughs> manipulating and you know just kind of worming their way through society. I don't know. I'm sorry if you can hear fireworks, I'm filming this the day before bonfire night so not great planning on my part. <laughs> now while I do keep mentioning this spiralling of mentality, I actually think this is quite a slow story, it's not a kind of thriller dark academia even though you do start knowing that something's about to escalate and go wrong somewhere. It's not really one that picks up tempo and it's not one where the climatic scene happens where you would expect it to, it kind of just eases its way along and that's almost more unnerving because everything seems so normal until you disconnect yourself from it and it's like, why? What is going on? <laughs> it definitely pulled through with the pretentious side of things that is usually associated with dark academia books and yeah I just found myself completely within the grasp of this book and I found it really hard to not think about it when I put it down which hasn't happened in a very long time so I really really enjoyed this one. There are all sorts of trigger warnings so I will put them down in the description box but yes if you're looking for a dark academia book then I would recommend this one. I rated it four out of five stars. And then the last book which I read in its entirety and I really really loved was Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. This is a book which combines the suffragette movement and the witch trials so in this book we follow three sisters and one of them is inspired to join the suffragettes however she really wishes that women could also gain power back in the form of witchcraft. Now the suffragettes don't really support this, they think that this is just going to scare everybody off and not want to support them anymore. So when they get wind of this she is kicked out from the group and so she decides to start her own. Now there is a lot more to the story than that but it does have this very revolutionary feel to it, it's very much about protests and it's just really lovely to read. Not necessarily because it is all revolutionary and yay for women but just generally in the writing it's lovely, it's just really nice to read the descriptions and I don't necessarily mean that in a flowery way, it does have some elements of flowery writing to it but it's more in the way that it's just put together really well. So for instance there is imagery which passes through each of the three sisters so maybe at some point in the book when they're apart there is some kind of imagery which links them all still. One example that I can think of at the moment was this metaphor of grief being a black dog and it was visiting each of the sisters and for each sister it would be slightly different 
but it would just be weaving its way through all of them and I think it's just a really nice way of showing that they were still connected because that is a very strong theme throughout this book. I did worry to begin with that the sisters themselves would turn out to be quite 2D characters because they do fall into these character archetypes I guess. We have the outrageous one, the wise one and the maternal one and I just thought that because these titles had been placed on them all that they would only be that but as we went through the book that did become more built up and really showed why they were given these titles I guess. There is also an element of fairy tale retellings in this because every so often stories would be told which would be reimaginings of fairy tales with gender bent characters and a certain witchy perspective to it which just made it really nice and also familiar because it meant that the actual magic that the witchcraft was rooted in throughout this book was really familiar to you because it would be nursery rhymes or stories that the witchcraft would actually be stemming from and they were the words that were used throughout. But most of all I think I just really liked how this entire book was a story of endurance and sheer willpower. There is so much in this book about the will and just having the willpower to make something go your way which I just really like the idea. So I had a grand old time reading this. I think the characters were really fun to read. It's really diverse. We do have disability rep, people of colour and LGBTQ plus characters. I will say that we did fall into a certain cycle of events which I can't say what kind of cycle that is because it would spoil most of the book for you because this is the point. It would be the same sort of cycle over and over again but at the same time it was kind of nice to read a book and feel safe within it which sounds really strange to say because this quite literally is about discomfort and unrest and revolution but I think it is because it was paired with that familiarity of having fairy tales and childhood nursery rhymes all the way through and a lot of it being recognisable that just made me really enjoy this book so yeah. I rated this book 4.5 out of 5 stars, I really really loved it. I feel like I could talk about it for days but I already have done so I shall no more. <laughs> And then one which I did just want to very quickly mention is The Mask Falling by Samantha Shannon. I was very kindly gifted this arc and I have never been so excited for a book in my life. This is the fourth book in the Bone Season series and I did manage to read half of it but sadly I have had to pause it towards the end of October because I had to catch up on book club reads and university and stuff so didn't manage to finish this before the end of October as I had planned but that does mean I still get to enjoy it throughout November so my thoughts on this one will be in my November wrap up. So that that is it for my October wrap up. I don't even know if this is good or bad because it's the worst I've done this year. In fact it's the worst I've done in a very long time. But I did really enjoy two of the books, like really really enjoyed reading the two books that I rated 4 and 4.5 stars so that's a win at least. <laughs> I can at least promise you that my November wrap up will be bigger than this one because I have already read two books and I'm well on my way to finishing a third so even within the first week of November I'm doing better than I did in October. I don't know what happened in October but we're done now so. <laughs> As always, let me know if you've read any of the books I mentioned in this video and what your thoughts on them were if you have and also let me know what your favourite read of October was. But I shall leave you here, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box you'll find information to all the books I've just mentioned, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!